Ooh, yeah, boy. What's happening, guys? Welcome back to Angry Mac Adventures. Now, as you can tell from the title, we have installed a Yamaha four-stroke outboard. So, guys, we're going to be installing it, servicing it, and, of course, answering a bunch of questions that you guys have left for me. So, stay tuned. Here she is, guys, finally landed from Melbourne. The new outboard for Angry Mac 2. I'll tell you what, the packaging, A1. Uncle Gigi! There he is, he's barking again, what yeah. he's done. Yeah, Uncle Stevie! I know, he's buying and selling and fixing, I don't know anymore. <laughs> I might hook it up before we undo those, so it stops the... Take the cover off. Yeah. Fire out. Four stroke, yeah. Four stroke, mate. They reckon that's the way to go. Alrighty, so we've got to take these two bolts out, and under here there's two lifting mounts. So we'll hook, get the bobcat and we'll hook it up, and then bolt it straight on. Yep. Alright. Alright, down a bit. Down a bit. Now I've got to get the cover of the panel. That's it, sit it right there. Right. Beautiful. Prior to the new outboard getting installed, all the silicon was removed from the Angry Mac 2 transom. Having the hydraulic steering already hooked up, it made it a pretty easy installation with the help of Uncle Steve and my brother Matt. Five minutes after that shot was taken, it absolutely started hammering down with rain. So we had to bring it back in the shed and I ended up finishing it off, installing the gauges and controls. All right. Alrighty guys, the Yamaha is now installed. It was basically the same steps as the Evan route. All the controls are now fitted to the boat as well as the gauges as well. Uh, a little bit down the track, we will be doing a bit of a dash um, refiberglass because uh, the gauges are different. The oil was removed from the engine prior to it getting transported here. So we are going to give it the basic filters and oil service today using the genuine Yamaha parts. So we've got the Yamaha fuel filter, we've got the Yamalu four stroke oil and the Yamaha genuine oil filter. Let's get straight into the servicing. So we're just removing the crowling and of course the oil was already removed with the transportation. So we're just gonna be removing the filter. Just have a little bit of a look in there, make sure there's nothing out of the ordinary. Replacing it with a brand new filter with a little bit of used oil on the O-ring so it's nice and easy to remove later. And then we're just gonna make it hand tight. Then with the oil, we're just gonna fill it up. Approximately 3.7 liters. That was the spec that Yamaha told me. But just remember that there's nothing in the filter yet, so you'll have to top it up or just check it once you've started the engine. So there was a few things that weren't in stock like the Impella and thermostat, but if you guys want to see a full service on this, including all the gear oils and spark plugs, leave a comment below. Last thing to do was I just wanted to install a brand new fuel filter and then it was ready to start. So we had it running for about five to 10 minutes just to make sure the thermostat opened up, but it is recommended to change them out every two years. So we're definitely gonna be doing that. and test out the new outboard and let me tell you I'm pretty impressed um, it runs really really well it's so smooth it's quiet uh, it just gets in the gear really nicely uh, we're hitting about 5700 rpm uh, WOT which is perfect um, you want to you want to upwards of that five and a half to six thousand rpm rev range so you know you're getting your your max out of your engine and we're hitting about 34 knots which is uh, roughly the similar to what we'll get out the Evan route uh, with the canopy on so I'm more than happy engines running good guys It's gonna be good. 
Let's go out there and catch some fish. Alrighty guys, so last year I purchased the Evinrude E-Tech, which is the 115 horsepower uh, two-stroke, and that was the G1. And guys, I still love two-strokes to today. The old man's got a 250 horsepower Evinrude E-Tech on the back of his tournament, and he absolutely loves it. And you know, you can't really not. They're fast, they're reliable, they're easy maintenance, and there's actually not a lot of weight on the back end of the boat. But of course, two strokes are pretty much a thing of the past now, and uh, you see a lot of four strokes getting around because uh, there is a lot of benefits to four strokes as well, and that includes uh, they're quieter, they're smoother, um, you don't have to run them with oil, and of course they're fuel efficient, which is what people want to see out of an outboard. I always wanted to buy a brand new engine for Angry Mac 2, and it just wasn't in my budget. For a brand new four-stroke Yami installed 115 horsepower, you're looking at upwards of $18,000, which is just huge. So uh, I decided to buy the Evinrude E-Tech 115, second-hand of course, um, which was actually fairly good considering the price that I paid. It's actually quite hard to find second-hand or good second-hand four-stroke outboards, especially in the 20-inch leg. Um, a lot of the boats now and manufacturers are moving away from that 20-inch transom and going to 25-inch upwards of that. So it's quite hard to, to find a good second-hand four-stroke. So I kind of just purchased this two-stroke to make do uh, until I could afford a brand new outboard. Now, if you guys are in the boating industry or you love your Evinrude e techs you'd probably know that Evinrude has now stopped manufacturing on all outboards. And that was literally a month after uh, I purchased mine. So I did have that issue in Exmouth with the water being in the fuel of the e tech so we actually didn't run uh, the boat for that whole trip, which was quite sad, but it is what it is. We ended up bringing it back to the mechanic when we got back, and he pretty much said to us, uh, look, there's actually not much in the injectors, which is a really good sign, but if you do uh, decide to keep this engine for a long time, I would recommend uh, changing the injectors. But we did get them fully serviced. Um, we can't actually physically pull apart and rebuild the Evernote injectors because they're like a sealed unit, but we did give them a full service with brand new O-rings, brand new filters, etc. So we put them back in the boat and it's been running good ever since. But we did end up selling that Evernote off to the new buyer, giving him all that information. So uh, a lot of you guys were wondering why I just didn't buy brand new injectors for the Evernote E-Tech. Um, you're looking at approximately $400 per injector and that's fitted. So for that kind of money, uh, I thought I'd just put that money towards uh, a four stroke. Now, that leads me to the Yamaha. Guys, I was searching for months trying to find the right outboard for this boat, and we finally come across one. So this is uh, a Yamaha 115 horsepower fuel-injected outboard. Now, this engine is a few years old, but it's only done under 100 hours, and this thing is pristine. The previous owner, Mick, Thank you so much, mate. He boxed it up from Melbourne and sent it to Perth, Western Australia. And guys, as you can see from the packaging, it was... Oh, that thing wasn't moving, let's just say that. Mick, he actually kept me up to date from buying the engine all the way through to sending it to the transport company. So Mick, thank you so much, mate. You're, you're an absolute legend. Uh, he sent me photos all the way through and this thing was Mickey Mouse when it arrived in Perth. So we hooked it all up and bang, first turn of the key started up. So I cannot wait to start using it. So that's why I went with the four stroke, guys. It was just the right time. Everything was there and lined up. So the last question you guys asked was, how come I haven't seen much of the boat content? Well, with the FJ build and a few other projects, uh, my weekends have been a bit tied up, but don't worry, they will be coming out very shortly. So this is my last episode for a few weeks because I'm actually heading up north to shoot some land-based fishing content. So that's going to be awesome. Make sure you stay tuned for that. But yes, we are going to be taking this out very shortly. So stay tuned, guys. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.